when we measure cholesterol, we actually measure different types of cholesterol. The most common thing that most people are aware of is what we call the total cholesterol, and that represents all the cholesterol in your body. Mm -hmm. But then we have different types of total cholesterol. We have good cholesterol. Many people call that the HDL cholesterol. I tell my patients it's the happy cholesterol. And we have bad cholesterol. We call that the LDL cholesterol. And I tell my patients that's the lousy cholesterol. These do different things. So bad cholesterol, which we call LDL cholesterol, is bad only when we have too much of it. It's important. We need cholesterol. It supports the cells in our body. We can't live without cholesterol. If you don't make cholesterol, you're not going to do very well. Mm -hmm. However, if you have too much of the bad cholesterol, what happens is your body can't get rid of it as well as it should. And in fact, the reason we often have too much of the bad cholesterol is because we can't get rid of it. And so it has to go somewhere else. And one of the places it likes to go is into the walls of our arteries. And it starts the formation of what we call atherosclerosis or heart disease. Mm. And that leads to the formation of plaques that can cause heart attacks and strokes. The HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol, does many different good things. The most commonly thought of good effect of the HDL cholesterol is to take cholesterol that's been deposited in the artery wall by the bad cholesterol and remove it and bring it back to the liver so we can get rid of it, so we can dispose of it. Okay. Triglycerides are another component of what we call the lipid panel, which is a series of tests that people get when they have their cholesterol checked. Triglycerides represent fat in the body, and fat can be stored in many different organs, in our body tissues, and actually used for energy too. So while it's important to us, again for normal bodily function, too much of it can be bad. It can cause weight gain, and it can also change the way we metabolize cholesterol, sometimes turning good cholesterol into bad cholesterol. We also think about the good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol, and that level varies depending on whether you are a man or a woman. For women, a normal HDL cholesterol would be greater than 50. And for men, a normal HDL cholesterol would be greater than 40. The bad cholesterol is the LDL cholesterol. And we think about normal for LDL as being 130. But I always tell people normal is really average. And we all want to be better than average because the average way to die in this country is heart disease. And so I don't want to be average and I don't think my patients want to be average either. So diet and exercise can affect our cholesterol levels. And they do it in different ways. Oftentimes, if we're overweight, we can have high triglyceride levels. And high triglyceride levels can be lowered very effectively by weight loss in people who are obese or overweight. So anything that gets you to lose weight potentially has good effects mm -hmm. on the HDL and the triglycerides. By reducing the intake of fatty foods or foods that have an increased amount of what we call simple carbohydrates. What are simple carbohydrates? They're anything that's white. White bread, <laughs> white rice, regular pasta, etc. <music> Exercise mm -hmm. is most effective in raising the good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And so people who exercise can often raise their good cholesterol. And people who lose weight, independent of diet, can raise their good cholesterol. So there are lots of things you can do to affect yeah. your cholesterol and triglycerides independent of taking medications. In addition, there are many food supplementations that we can add to our diet to improve our cholesterol profile. Increasing fiber lowers the bad cholesterol. Certain types of nuts 
mm -hmm. almonds, walnuts, etc., can have good effects on the cholesterol profile, mm -hmm. as can soy protein in some cases. Mm -hmm. You just have to start moving. Mm -hmm. The American Heart Association has a great program. It's called Choose to Move. Mm -hmm. That means get up and start walking. Do something. Mm -hmm. As simple as walking those stairs instead of taking an elevator mm -hmm. or taking a brisk walk after dinner with mm -hmm. your spouse. Mm -hmm. um, walking the dog, mowing the lawn. So there are many different types of medications that we use in addition to diet and lifestyle counseling to lower cholesterol. The most commonly used medications and the ones people are most aware of are a class of drugs called statin medications. These have been around for quite a while now, and they have been shown not only to lower cholesterol, but also to reduce risk of heart attack, stroke, death from heart attack and stroke, bypass procedures, the types of things that, that we would want to have reduced if we were lowering our cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So they really remain the cornerstone of our cholesterol-lowering therapy when we use prescription medication. And so again, understanding why your cholesterol is elevated mm -hmm. and what your risk for heart disease is helps the physician decide how that patient should have their cholesterol lowered. There definitely is a link or an association between high blood pressure, hypertension, mm -hmm. and high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And we see it in many different ways. Mm -hmm. The first is that patients with high blood pressure are more likely to have high cholesterol, and vice versa. Patients with high cholesterol are more likely to have high blood pressure. So you, if you have one of these conditions, you better make sure you get checked for the other. That's mm -hmm. key. The second is that when it comes to risk for heart disease, having one of these conditions puts you at greater risk of having heart disease when you have the other. So patients with high blood pressure need to be more concerned when they have high cholesterol, and patients with high cholesterol oftentimes need to have lower cholesterol levels if they have high blood pressure. So you can't really look at one out of the context of the other. And if you're getting your cholesterol checked, it's a great time to have your blood pressure checked. We always do both at the same time. I never do one without the other, and it's important to pay attention to both.